board met tonight in executive session. We're now ready to continue with the public portion of our meeting. Um, we did not have any public correspondence since our last meeting, which was September 9th. Uh, so I will go ahead with the president's report. Uh, first of all, I want to remember uh, Robert Temmler, who was a for eight years a crossing guard at the intersection of Bloomfield and Ridgewood, sometimes serving along the famous val uh, with the famous Valentine, uh, sometimes by himself. Mr. Temmler passed away um, just last week, so we send our sympathies to his wife and his family. Uh, I also note under personnel, uh, we have. Added to our substitute list, Laura Perius, who is a Glenridge retiree, longtime elementary school teacher. Um, people were extremely sad when she retired, and I know um, she's a, a great addition to our substitute roster. Um, the budget, the state budget, will be finished by September 30th, and it looks like they will get it done perhaps even a little ahead of schedule. The leadership of the um, two legislative houses and the governor have come to an agreement on some substantial uh, items, including the millionaire's tax, which is something the governor has been asking for since he became governor. Um, according to the governor's office, some of the revenue from the um, millionaire's tax will go for education. So we can, uh, we can keep that in mind. And um, there are a couple of new laws that the governor signed that have um, relevance for education. One is the establishment of a new position in the Department of Ed, which will be the school nurse coordinator, whose goal it will be to sort of coordinate the efforts of all school nursing in the state and um, make some needed uh, sort of communications and other improvements. And it's very much hoped that the school nursing coordinator will also provide a better liaison uh, for the Department of Education with the Department of Health, which is something that we've been missing during the um, COVID-19 epidemic. The other new law that was signed is, called, is known as the subcontracting law, and it limits um, subcontracting that we can do uh, during the term of existing employee contracts. So in other words, if we wanted to subcontract something like janitorial services, and I'm not saying that we are going to do that, that's something other districts have done, we would have to wait till the end of an employment contract, a teacher's contract, uh, to consider that subcontracting. So that has been signed into law. Uh, and that is the president's report. Um, Superintendent's report. Thank you, Betsy. I'd like to provide an update on the schools. Um, the hybrid models have worked so, uh, well so far as safety is concerned. And uh, it's, it's, as I mentioned, we're now in, uh, it, it's, it's been great to have the students and staff back into the building. Um, they've been following the protocols and uh, the parents have been proactive in notifying us about any potential issues. Um, so things have worked very well as far as safety and health of our students, staff are, are concerned. Um, I'm starting to get some requests from parents about uh, the possibility of extending uh, school hours. I just wanna uh, remind everyone we're, we're progressing and we're gonna be pro uh, pro uh, cautious as we're moving forward. Um, if you've paid attention to the news, there have been several school districts that have had COVID uh, cases in the buildings, uh, which has resulted in them either shutting down the district or an individual building. We just wanna make sure that we're operating as safe as possible. We also have the additional challenge right now of we really have three different models going with the primary schools and the AMPM split, the uh, Richard Avenue School in an AB rotation and the high school still on a, a vir all virtual um, experience. Um, that being said, as we start looking at ways that we can start moving forward um, at Ridgewood Avenue, we decided to offer the option of students who have greater needs to attend on a daily basis. This is a parent option and it's not gonna impact any of our safety protocols. We'll still be able to social distance in the classroom. Um, and, and that's something that we made sure um, it's that we weren't making any significant changes to any of our safety protocols. Um, at the high school, uh, our, our contractor, if you drive by the high school, you see a number of vans in the parking lot, continues to work on the high school. There's been several crews there on a daily basis. Um, at this time, uh, 
they've informed us that they need to replace several motors. Um, they're a little concerned about uh, just getting the parts uh, in a timely manner. So it's something that we're uh, watching. Or, uh, they're hoping they can uh, um, expedite that order and, and make sure that we're ready for October 5th. Um, but this could possibly cause delays. I just want to make everyone aware of that. I will get an update before the end of the week and a decision will be made before for, um, the end of the week and I will notify everyone on Friday uh, where we're at and, uh, and what our uh, opening date for the high school to go to their hybrid model will be. Um, at Central School, we're, it's, they're forming their first home and school association. So the first meeting is this Wednesday where they're voting officers and um, you know, the big talk right now is we have to find, name a mascot for the school. So there's been a couple surveys out to the staff and to the parents. We're gonna uh, narrow it down to some finalists and have the students vote. And then the committee will decide based on all um, three inputs from the students, parents, and staff. Um, the equity committee released its first newsletter on Friday. It's called Evolved. Uh, it's, it's a terrific uh, newsletter. It includes, um, opportunities for individuals to reflect on views and, and um, um, but also it includes um, tools for uh, and resources for uh, the teachers to use within the classroom. We are going to make that available to um, the public. We're still working on creating that website and that should be done shortly where we'll include uh, the, the newsletter. Um, we also, as a district, joined Central Jersey Consortium for Excellence and, Equal and Equity, uh, which is ran out of Monmouth University. The Glenridge Education Foundation is supporting the district in this group um, by paying its membership due. So I, I wanna thank the Glenridge Education Foundation. Today, we had our first meeting. We have a district uh, team, it includes 10 staff members. Um, we met for, uh, two and a half hours today we're uh, just laying the groundwork for creating some goals and working towards achieving those goals and we'll be meeting throughout the school year um, as we're working towards accomplishing those goals uh, what's also nice about this group is it has a student team and um, we're going to have 10 students and they're going to meet uh, twice with uh, uh, the facilitators so the students can work on some of the goals uh, they would like to see happen within the district so, um, and their first meeting is next month. I want to remind the parents uh, that we are closed next Monday. And the last thing I want to mention is on election day, November 3rd, uh, the state has said that all public schools must physically be closed. So we're not going to have uh, uh, anyone in our buildings on, uh, as far as students are concerned on November 3rd, we will be offering an all virtual experience for the entire district that day. And that's all, Betsy. Okay, uh, board members, any questions on the um, president's report or superintendent's report? Okay, uh, hearing none, we have arrived at the first public comment period for public comments on agenda items only. I'll just remind you of our um, protocols, which is that every speaker has two minutes to uh, speak. Um, and you get two minutes in the first public comment period, which is this one. And you may have an additional two minutes at the end of the meeting in the second public comment period. If you have a comment, um, use the raise your hand function on Zoom, which if you go down to the participants uh, tab down at the bottom of the middle bottom of the screen and press on that, you should be able to use the raise your hand function. And I will uh, call on you in the order in which you appear. Um, if you have more than one question or comment, please uh, give them all to us at the beginning of your, um, before we do any answers, so that we can uh, give each question and comment the appropriate amount of time and, um, and, and know the extent of your questions or comments. So with that, uh, does anyone have a question or comment for the board? Uh, I don't see any. We'll wait just another minute. Betsy, Betsy Mary Lynn Savio has her hand raised. I'm sorry, Mary Lynn. Thank you. 
Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, um, as we prepare to return to in-person instruction at the high school specifically, I wanted to uh, ask if there were plans to revisit the requests from several staff members who require accommodations under the ADA due to documented medical conditions that put them at high risk for severe illness or potential death if they should contract COVID. This has kind of been, you know, put aside for the time being, but of course it's becoming more a concern again. Um, although the district's required by law to consider each request on case by case basis, each of these individuals will receive the same blanket response that simply states the district is not approving work from home accommodations. Um, so at this time, I you know, request that we can revisit that. Other districts have found ways to enable these high risk individuals to continue to teach remotely and stay safe as transmission rates continue to rise in the state. Um, so we'd like you to see if there was some creative way to both enable continuity of instruction and protect our staff who have these high risk conditions. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Lynn. Uh, Dirk? Um, those are personnel questions that I, I'd be more than happy to speak with individuals about, but I, I don't want to address those publicly. Um, you know, we are, the only thing I will say is uh, in a hybrid model, we have live instruction and an expectation then that uh, we would have a live instructor available for those students. Okay, uh, other questions or comments? Don't see any hands. If anyone else sees hands, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions for the first public comment period, um, you again will have another chance in the second public comment period. Uh, let us go on to the other agenda items that we have. It is not the first meeting of the month when we normally do committee and liaison reports. Uh, does anyone have any report that is time sensitive? It does not sound like it. All right, um, moving on to minutes. All of you have minutes in your packet from exec session and uh, regular session uh, for September 9th, 2020. I hope that you have had a chance to review those minutes. Uh, Michael, would you move the minutes? Yeah, I'll move uh, M1. All right, may I have a second? Second. Second. I think I heard a second from David uh, first. So we'll give it to David. Does anyone have any additions or deletions to either set of minutes? Does not sound like it. Barbara, would you call the roll? Uh, you're muted, Barbara. Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyavolucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLu? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. All right, uh, personnel. Tracy, would you move the personnel items? Uh, yes, I'll move P1 through P10. May I have a second? Second. Second from Anthony. Uh, in keeping with the board members code of ethics and our rules, any personnel items are discussed in executive session. Uh, if there is no objection, um, let's go forward with a vote. Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyavolucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLu? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, we've come to the business items, and before we move on those, uh, I would like to draw your attention to B6, uh, which are uh, gifts, the first of which is a Confucius Institute grant for Chinese, for the Chinese program, uh, in the sum of $10,000 from the Confucius Institute of Rutgers University. 
The second is a small metal filing cabinet from Janet Massinio, who is an aide at Central School. And the third uh, is what Dirk mentioned earlier, uh, the price of membership, the membership fee for the Central Jersey Consortium for Excellence and Equity. So thank you to all those generous donors. Uh, we could not function the way we do without the generosity of our, our many generous donors. And uh, with that, Paul, would you move the business items? Yes, I'd like to move items B1 through B8. May I have a second? Um, can we add B9 to that on the agenda? Sure. Barbara, would you just read that out in case um, people do not have that? Yep. Uh, upon the recommendation, the superintendent moved to approve the following change orders. Change order number 10 from GDS Mechanical Incorporated for repair of damaged security cameras and fire alarms at Ridgewood Avenue School for a credit of $5,894.20. And B, change order number 11 from GDS Mechanical for replacement of new copper leader at Ridgewood Avenue School for a credit of $1,799.40. Thank you, Barbara. So I'd like to amend the record. So I would like to uh, move items B1 through B9 inclusive of the agenda. Okay, may I have a second? Second. A second from David. Uh, any discussion on any of these business items? Okay, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Volucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Okay, we have arrived at the second public comment period for questions or comments on agenda or other items that relate to the operation of our schools. The same rules apply that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, please use the raise your hand function once again, and we will recognize you. Uh, so if there are any questions or comments, please go ahead. Okay, I see uh, Mary Lynn Savio again. Mary Lynn? Um, I wanted to just say that on behalf of the GREA, we appreciate the reminder that was sent out last week to families to follow health and safety protocols um, to keep students home if they have any questions about their health. In the district reopening plan, it says that individuals with suspected COVID or who have displayed any symptoms should wait 10 days after symptoms have first appeared before returning in person. Is this policy currently being adhered to? Um, if a student is homesick with any symptoms listed on the screening checklist, are they being required to stay home 10 days? If not, what assurance is being provided that the student's illness was not COVID related? It's my understanding that school nurses have been instructed to follow the existing policy for readmittance, assuming that they have not tested for COVID. Um, as per existing policy, student has been absent They should for suspected communicable disease, they must present a doctor's note. Is this what's currently happening in the schools? And how does this apply to high school sports? Are those who have missed practice being required to provide a doctor's note before returning to practice? Thank you. Thanks, Mary Lynn. Uh, Dirk, do you want to speak to those um, questions about protocols for COVID or suspected COVID diagnoses? So, so um, as far as following protocols, um, I'd have to check with individual buildings. I haven't had a complaint or an issue yet. Um, the nurses have kept me kind of infor uh, kept me informed when there's been unique situations, and I know they've been in contact with the local health uh, department. And, and many times, when you have those questionable, um, uh, unsure situations, the, the, the local health department is giving you the guidance that we should be following. Um, I am meeting with the school nurses this week, so I, I will. Uh, review our policy and make sure um, that it's being followed. Um, and I did reach out to the, um, uh, Maryland and I spoke last week um, um, and she mentioned that the concern about athletics since the, those students are not in school. So we don't, those, that information isn't readily available to us because we're not seeing them. Um, so I did reach out to our um, director of student activities, Rob Hill, and make sure that he reminded the coaches that they need to be following those policies. 
uh, and make sure that if there's um, a communicable um, reason uh, this student was out from practice that they have a doctor's note before they return to practice. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Again, please use the raise your hand function. Okay, I see one hand, one moment. Um, who do we have? I see one hand raised. Hi, this is Yasmin Veland. I'm a Glen Ridge resident on Columbus Avenue, and I'm the Forest Avenue Home and School Association co-president. Um, I was just wondering, uh, hi, how are you? Yes, I was um, just wondering if you could speak a little to the rationale for the all virtual um, learning day on uh, election day, please. Uh, that is something that uh, was um, a gubernatorial order. And it came down probably 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we are bound to, we like all other school districts and schools in the state are bound by that gubernatorial order. I see. Um, did uh, Governor Murphy provide any explanation for the order? I think that uh, he did not go into an extended explanation at his press conference when he announced it. I believe it is to part of his initiative to make voting as um, easy and in these times as possible. Uh, and um, uh, that's the only rationale that I know of. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Other questions? Don't see any other hands. I'll give it another minute uh, for technological reasons. Okay, I do not see any further blue hands. Uh, Dirk or Winnie, if you see something that I don't see, let me know. I don't see anything. Okay, uh, with that, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Okay, I think Anthony had the motion and I think David had the, the we'll give David the second. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight. And uh, just a reminder that uh, if you, have further questions, you can always address them to the superintendent and or the board. Thank you all. <laughs>